Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the new X-Files trailer and recreate the titles. So there's a new X-Files season coming out and with that, the new trailer and the titles I thought looked really cool. Here's uh, what I came up with. This is what we're going to be building. It's not an exact copy of the original, um, but let me just show you what the original looks like just so you have an idea. And what we have here is some text kind of flying in in pieces, this circle, and kind of a grungy background. So let's take a look at building this. I'm going to start with a new composition. Okay, I'm going to first build the background and then we'll do the text. So I'm going to start with a brand new black solid called BG for background. And to this, let's add some effects. I'm going to start with turbulent noise. And let's um, just maybe change the contrast on this a little bit maybe bringing the brightness down and into the transform let's scale it up and bring the complexity down so I just want a little bit of a white going on and let's kind of arrange this so it's more on the edges that's looking pretty good okay now to this I want to add some lines so let's find the grid effect just generate grid. Switch from corner point to height and width sliders. The height sliders, bring them way up, way over a thousand, and then we'll just move the anchor point so it's off the screen. We just want vertical lines for this. Bring them into, that's about 7.8 is what I have there. Increase the feather. And then let's change the blending mode of this from none over to overlay. And what we have, it's just going to kind of overlay it where the white is. And maybe even come in, bring the opacity down just so it's not very pronounced. Just a little bit of lines going on. I'm going to take this turbulent noise and duplicate it and let's put it on the other side of the grid and increase the complexity. And let's move it. Change the blending mode to screen and bring the opacity down. I just want a little bit of kind of extra. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now on top of this, let's add a light sweep. So generate light sweep. Set that at 90 degrees and let's take off the edge intensity. Increase the width. Okay, and then let's add curves to this. Remove some red. Get kind of a, a uh, bluish cyan tint to it. Let's add a lens flare. Just the built-in one will do. Let's actually put that before the curves. And let's change this to 105 millimeter prime. And let's move it way off to the side. You can see a little bit of a corner going on there. And then from this, I'm going to add one more effect, exposure. And with the curves, actually, let's bring the RGB even down further. Now what exposure does is it just kind of brightens everything up. You see how it does that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an expression to the exposure. So I Option or Alt and I clicked on Exposure Stopwatch and then let's type Wiggle and in parentheses put 2 comma 2 close parentheses and then what will happen is it's going to kind of flicker a little bit. So let's start building the text layer above that. So just grab your text tool type the X files. I'm using a font called Bourbon and it's available through the type kit, Adobe type kit. It's not the exact same font that the X-Files uses, um, but I thought it kind of had a similar feel. It is a little bit more of a heavy font. The other one is, is a lot thinner. Now, before we do any more to this, I want to duplicate this, but I, let's add some effects to this layer first. So really, I just want to add kind of a little bit of a gradient to this. 
So let's go in, add the ramp effect. And maybe change this black color, a bit of a green. That's looking pretty good. Now let's take this and we're gonna add some masks to this. Just rectangle masks. And what I wanna do, let's zoom in closer, is do four masks. Make sure they overlap a little bit. And you cover the entire words like that. Now let's duplicate this. Let's go into the masks and let's remove them, uh, half of them. So on the bottom layer, let's remove two and four. And then on the top layer, let's remove one and three. So then here's the next tricky part. I'm going to use the puppet tool to do some really cool stuff with this. So, I, But first, before I do that, I want to find out where I want, what point in the in this video I want all of the words to be together. So probably we're looking at about one second. Everything's gonna be lined up. And so I wanna do that because when I add the puppet tool, it'll automatically add all the keyframes at that point, and this is where I want it to be all lined up. So let's start with the top one. Grab the puppet tool, and I am going to just put a pin right here. Make sure that Right here where there's the, the mask is outlined with yellow, you don't want to click there, well, at least not yet, but you want to make sure the words are outlined like that, the letters. And then we do actually want to here for the whole mask as well. And so what I can do with this, and let me do the top ones too. Now I can move these and they will move independently, see? So let's go back in time, and these ones I want to have it start on the right. So let's find first that top one, and let's bring it over, say about right here. And then let's take all these others and just start to move them over. So we can see how they're kind of moving in like that. Now let's do the bottom line. Okay. And you want them to move all kind of separately. I don't want just to move the position on this. I want to kind of all the letters to move separately. Now let's go ahead and do that to the next layer. Now I'm holding down shift as I move them just to keep them straight. You click and start to move them and then you hold down shift. If you're holding down shift before, then it'll just shift and multiply, multiple select all of them. And I don't want to select them all at the same time. I just want to select one and move it. So I click, then hold down shift and it'll keep it locked into position. See, right now I go like this, hold down shift and it stays so it doesn't drift vertically. Okay, let's take a look at both these put together. Looking pretty good. It kind of moves a little bit fast at the end. So let's slow that down. Let's go in, I hit U and it brought up all my keyframes. Now with the puppet tool, the keyframes are, you know, really kind of out there. You have to twirl down lots and lots of things and so it's really hard to see them all and select them all. But I'm gonna take them all and let's move them all the way to the beginning. Okay, that's for one layer and we gotta do it to both layers. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to select all these keyframes and then let's easy ease them. Then go into the graph editor and I'm going to select just the last point and let's have it ease so it slows down a lot at the end. Perfect, now we need to do that to the other one. Let's take a look at this. Okay, looking pretty good. So let's add a little bit more to this. Say I want this to be a little bit blurry. So let's find some blur. 
we can do just a, a, a fast blur, but let's try something a little different. Let's do like a box blur. Have it at 10 out there. And then when it syncs up, have it set to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my playhead is at the beginning of that keyframe. Copy the box blur and paste it on the other one and it'll paste the keyframes in that same spot. Other things we can do is say the scale. And kind of widen the scale. That's looking pretty cool. Now with this, if I want to change the text, I can go in and change both texts. Or if I go into the text source text, I can pick whip those together. So option or alt click on the stopwatch and just pick whip one to the other. Swap that out. And we've got it now with a new name. Okay, let's keep it the X files. Now, the last thing we need to do is add the circle around the X. So for this, I'm just going to use a shape layer. Let's grab the ellipse tool, make sure no layer is selected, otherwise it'll be a mask. And let's create a circle around the X. Let's delete the fill, change the stroke to red. Now, to this, let's add the light sweep. Take away the edge thickness. Let's change this to more of an orange color, maybe orangey red. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, let's add in the shape layer for the ellipse, let's add a trim path. So after everything gets together, so right where everything is kind of lined up, keyframe the start and the offset. Go forward a few frames. Bring the offset down to, to like 230 degrees, start to zero, and then it'll look something like this. Maybe offset way over, so it looks like that. That's kind of cool. Maybe that's too much. Let's try 1 and 50. It's just kind of a, you kind of guess and look and do what you like. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a blur, a blur to this. So effect, blur and sharpen, and let's just do a fast blur. And we're talking like three, and maybe a little more. So that's at five. I want this to be a little bit thinner, so let's go to five pixels. Looking pretty good, and I'm going to drop the opacity just a bit. Okay, there's the one circle. In the example, there were two circles. So let's create another one. Just another shape layer. This one's bigger. It goes below the text. Go into the ellipse and remove the fill. Let's make sure it's centered where we want it to be. Add the same fast blur to it. Let's also add that same light sweep. But this time let's make the sweep a lot wider and make it blue and the opacity even down further something we just want it very subtle I might even take the the stroke thickness and bring that down just barely there now we're gonna add a mask to this and when you're adding a mask to a shape layer um, you select one of your tools and there's see there's a star there that's the tools creation shape or a tool creates mask, right? So we click it so it creates a mask. Otherwise, it's just going to create another shape on top of this, and I want to mask it out. 
let's go into the mask path and hit subtract and then feather the edge and there we have kind of the background circle something light and just barely there now what I want to do is I'm gonna add just a black solid on top of this and we'll use that to fade in and out another thing is these two X-Files layers let's fade the opacity in and out let's do a quick render All right, I want to add one more thing to this. I want to duplicate the background. And then I am going to add a mask to the background right in the same spot as where this green ring is. And then I'm going to take this, and for the evolution, I'm going to change it a bit. Add a bit of a random seed. Maybe brighten it up just a bit. I'm going to take the whole opacity and bring it down. I just want to have a hint of a different kind of a circle there. Let's take a look at that all rendered out. Okay, looking pretty good. So that is my take on the X-Files title. So I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. And if you found this was useful, feel free to share it with others. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.